the battle lines have been drawn and the guys who are you know get left out in the cold are gonna get left out in the cold and they're gonna be right behind and with that being said welcome to 2022 welcome to the state of college football here on big boy sports we did we did something like this last season you know the whole state of college football thing you know that thing yeah where we discussed a lot of things going wrong you know we didn't think that we get to this point but we got here we got here to this point conference realignment let's start there USC UCLA they're going to the Big Ten they're going to the Big Ten and they're making bank at least uh, at least bare minimum one billion dollars for Fox who has slowly you know taken you know he was slowly to become the premier Big Ten rights holder as they have been for about 15 years now it's been about 15 years since they helped make Big Ten Network or a little over 15 and we all know what happened that first Big Ten Network game you know App State Michigan yeah so it's been a steady progression from getting the tier one rights back in what 2017 to now being the league for the Big Ten, and guess who's I guess who's knocked out of the discussions? Guess who's out? ESPN is out of the discussion. They couldn't they couldn't reel them in. They couldn't reel in the Big Ten for even a small package of games. You know, less games than it was in the previous contract. It's it's 27 each right now between Fox and ESPN and then the rest of the Big Ten Network. And now, you got a couple new players in the game. NBC and CBS who have, you know, put themselves together with the value being added in USC more so than UCLA. But the value has been added and the pot is stirring and the money is coming to the Big Ten. And they might have premier windows at every hour of the day from noon all the way to 7.30 at night. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful to see, you know, this configuration. There's a lot of things on the non-football side of things that do need to be worked out. But the football side of things has been taken care of. And... You know, it's not completely official yet because you know that they're not gonna they're not gonna say anything until they say anything. But Fox, NBC, and CBS, CBS desperately needed something. They needed some form of college football, major college football that wasn't the SEC because the SEC was gonna walk away and go to ESPN regardless. I'm tired of people saying, "Oh well, CBS should have bid more." No. They were going to walk away regardless. The SEC wanted everything on ESPN regardless. So what does this mean? What what does all this mean? You know, realignment, you know, the media rights and everything. It, it's going to benefit somebody, right? It's got to benefit somebody. The f 10 teams that are left in the Pac-12, they, they, they might be benefiting from this. Now, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, like... You know, they get actual windows again like they did back in the day when they were primarily on FSN and stuff like that. I remember FSN. Y'all remember FSN? Too bad it's the Bali Sports Networks now. But, you know, the value of those late games is there. And with Fox having the Mountain West, you know, the Mountain West could be that plug-in for, you know, those late games and, you know, so, you, know, you know, Fox ain't got to do nothing. Like they just plug in the Mountain West. They have 23 Mountain West games that they can plug in for those late spots. So the Pac-12, if they sign all the way with the ESPN, that could be good for them. The other wild card is the Big 12. What do they do? You know, there's all sorts of stuff going on. You know, you got UCF, Cincy, Houston, BYU coming in next season. And, you know, Texas and Oklahoma are still going to be in the conference. 
and uh, things things are gonna be crazy. You know, things are gonna be crazy starting in 2024 when USC and UCLA are in the Big Ten. So it's gonna be wild. You know, how does how does that first year of the Big Ten on CBS, and I know people are going to be really mad about that, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that CBS has used that college football theme, you know, since the 80s, you know, uh, you know, I've been watching some old games, by the way, uh, or rather listening to some old games as, you know, the off season has continued onward, uh, and it's always iconic, you know, to hear the CBS college football theme, you know, so there you go. Pod scheduling, having the top two teams go to the conference championship regardless, no divisions or anything like that. ACC shift the pod scheduling. Pac-12 is putting the top two teams in the championship. Um, now the pod system in the ACC is not perfect, by the way. It's not perfect at all. In fact, I do have some gripes with it, but there's better videos out there on that that I know of that talk about the pod system. You know, the Mountain West is shifting to a pod system. Sun Belt is fine. You know, the Fun Belt, it's going to be fun. Fun as hell. But we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk all, you know, you know, conferences and stuff like that. You know, who's going to win conferences and stuff like that as the season progresses, you know. For now, let, let's talk, you know, some of, some of this stuff, you know, some of this other stuff here. The Heisman Trophy first. I want to get to that first before we even talk, like, playoffs and, you know, yada, yada, yada. The five contenders for the Heisman for me are C.J. Stroud, the reigning Heisman winner Bryce Young, William Anderson Jr., B. John Robinson, and Caleb Williams. Uh, and it, you know, it's a, that's a lot of people's top five, you know, that are in the mix for winning the Heisman. I don't think Bryce Young is going to win his second year in a row. I do think, at the end of the day, C.J. Stroud might be winning the highest in this year. I don't know about Bijan. I don't know about Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams is great. I think Bijan is great. And really, you know, had, you know, Texas had that momentum last year, you know, same with Kenneth Walker last year. Uh, I think Bijan and, and Kenneth Walker would have had, you know, a little bit more favorability. Because I didn't think Bryce Young should have won the highest one last year. I really didn't. I didn't think he should have. I didn't really want Stroud to win it either. But I mean, I think Stroud is going to win it this year. I really think he's going to win the Heisman based on everything that is going to happen, you know, this year with the way Ohio State is looking. And we'll talk about the polls in a second, but, you know, there, there, there is, you know, there is something, you know, different this year. It's a crazier time, you know, after last season. There's one thing that the college football playoff has not had. We've had, you know, a non-champion. We've had, you know, three or four undefeated teams. We've had, you know, one-loss teams in, you know, the playoff. We've had a group of five team in the playoff. We've had new blood in the playoffs last year. Are we going to get new blood in the playoffs this year? Who knows? We'll see. One thing I'm definitely concerned about is, is there going to ever be a two-loss team in the playoff? We had, we almost had it before with Auburn. And that did not work out, thankfully, but we almost had one before. Will there be a two-loss team in the playoffs this year? Who knows? Now, the top three, you know, the, the I think these three are pretty much solid locks regardless of the playoff. You know, even with what might happen in week one, Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State, these are three of the four right here um, that a lot of people are picking. I'm picking three of the four to go to the playoff as well and then you know the other contenders the other contenders is a little bit tricky uh, you got teams like Michigan Texas USC Oklahoma and A&M who are not gonna be as good as people say uh, I don't think they're gonna be as good as people say you know um, you know things that have been you know going around about Texas the last couple of weeks especially you know oh man I don't, I don't even want to talk about that you know, I don't even want to talk about my horns like that, but I mean, it's true. You know, injuries have been wrecking teams. And, you know, we'll be talking about these injuries throughout the year. But injuries have been wrecking certain teams, and certain teams' momentum is going to be shifted based upon that. You know, there are some sleepers in here. You know, there, there's definitely some sleepers. You know, 
Air Force is one of them. Houston is one of them. Kentucky's one of them. BYU is another. Sleeper teams. You know, a lot of some people are picking Air Force to win every single game this year, and that Air Force team could be, you know, going to, I don't know, New Year's Six Bowl. Houston's another one that could potentially win every single game this year, but the American is still, you know, one of the better conferences in college football. So you know, there's still, you know, the the three teams from the American that are going to be leaving next after this season, they're all jockeying, you know, for that number one spot. There could be someone else in the American in the mix as well, but expect Houston, Cincy, and UCF to be in the mix. Cincy with a little bit more drop-off than others. UCF and Houston having a lot more momentum than, you know, some people would indicate. And at BYU, definitely a wild card in this situation. Um, they have the highest ceiling, and they they could have a very low ceiling, but they have the highest potential ceiling here, you know, along with Kentucky, who has to beat Georgia this year. They have to beat Georgia if they can. If Kentucky can beat Georgia and stop Georgia in November, that's going to be crazy. But that's but that we're not in November. We're in August, so <laughs> that's three months out. So we're not there at that point yet. So who are the other contenders that I think right now? There are five of them. There are five other contenders, in my opinion, that could be going into playoffs this year. I could be completely wrong on this, like you know, like I was last year. I was completely wrong last year with my playoff picks because I believe I said Clemson would be going last year, and they did not go last year. Uh, the other contenders are Oregon and Utah. A lot of people are very high on Utah. Notre Dame. Yes, Notre Dame. They have to, they have really a couple tough, tough games starting in week one, of course, against Ohio State. And the other team that they'll be facing later in the season in Clemson, along with the Miami Hurricanes, who have had a lot of momentum, you know, coming in from the offseason, coming into this season. And it's going to be crazy to see how the season shakes out. You know, lots of big games the first three weeks of the season. I'm going to be watching as many games as possible the first three weeks of the season to really hammer the point home that, hey, the season might be wild. I don't know if it'll be 2021 level, but I think it'll be a wild season, really, in college football. Next up is the AP poll. It came out this afternoon. Um, Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame are the one through five you got A&M, Utah, Michigan, Oklahoma, and Baylor, 6 through 10. Oregon, Oklahoma State, NC State, yes, NC State, USC, and Michigan State are the teams that are from 11 to 15. 16 through 20 is Miami, Pitt, Wisconsin, Arkansas, and Kentucky. And then 21 through 25 to round it out, Ole Miss, Wake Forest, Cincinnati, Houston, and BYU. Whew. Now, you could just say straight flush that, you know, hey, Clemson might be going to playoffs this year. You could just say that straight flush, and I wouldn't hold it against you. But I don't know if Clemson's going to do it. You know, I do think they might lose a game or two this season. Notre Dame is also a team that I think might lose a game or two this year. So, uh, you know, it really depends. I think we might actually have a two-loss team in the playoffs this year. I think there's enough. I think there's enough potential out there for a two-loss team to get to the college football playoff this year. I'm just saying. I still think we're gonna have. You know. You know. We might not even have an undefeated team this year. I don't think there's gonna be an undefeated team this year. I do think. I do think we're gonna have at least three teams that are gonna be 11 and one. Pop. Probably four, but you know, I see the potential in a ten and two team making the college football playoff. And you know, playoff expansion is sort of like yeah, yeah, we need we need playoff expansion stuff like that. That's a story for another day, and everything like that. Um, uh, we'll be talking a little bit more FCS throughout the year as well. There are some FCS games that I'm going to be looking at. Um, and honestly, you know, right now, <laughs> it's the Montanas and the Dakotas that, you know, you know, North and South Dakota State. 
Uh, yeah, the, the, those four teams, you know, Montana, Montana State, North Dakota State, South Dakota State, that a lot of people are picking in the FCS sphere to make the national semifinals, you know. So we'll see throughout the season what in the world things entail in the FCS as well. You know, you got you got a lot of storylines circulating in the FCS with conference realignment really impacting the FCS way more than the FBS. You know, it, it's really just impactful how things have gone, you know, in the lower level of Division One college football, you know, the one that actually has an actual, you know, NCAA sanctioned, sanctioned championship, you know. But the CFP this year, again, I don't, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you. Like, after... You know the top three. It's it's a log jam, and any and you could put Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia in any order, and it would just make sense to me. Like like you could say Georgia is number one, Ohio State two, and Alabama three. Like you could say Ohio State one, Georgia two, Alabama three. You could say Alabama one, Georgia two, Ohio State three. It 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 like you know the combinations of who's one, two, and three are endless, because. These are the three best teams in college football this year. They're going to be the three best teams. Now, all of them might lose a game. All three of them might lose a game. But I think these three teams are certainly going. It's just a matter of who's going to be the fourth team this year. And watch me be completely wrong on all four teams. I, I bet you I'm wrong on all four teams at one point. Or at least one of them. At least one to two. I'm going to be wrong on one to two of these teams. You know, I bet somebody from that group of Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia ain't going to the playoff. You know, I, I can tell you that. If it happens, it happens. You know, but I do think, I do think 90, 99% sure they're going to see Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia. Well, yes, there's that 1% in me that says, hey, one of these three teams ain't going. But that's just a small percent of me. That's just a small percent of my thinking. So in any case, um, again, I think C.J. Stroud will win the Heisman. I think Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and whoever that fourth team will be from a cluster of teams. No, I don't think a Big 12 team will make the playoff. Yeah, there's teams like Kansas State that, you know, have the potential to really, you know, shake things up. But the Big 12 is going to be a dogfight this year, unfortunately. Like, I don't, nobody at the Big 12 is going to have, you know, more than 10 wins. You know, like everybody's it's either you're either gonna be ten and two or you're gonna be like seven and five in the Big Twelve. That's just how it is. You know, the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, and maybe the Pac-12. You know, is gonna be a little bit more clear cut. And even then, the Pac-12 might eliminate themselves before September even ends. You know, again. <laughs> so with that being said. Thank you all so much for sticking with me. We'll be talking week zero next Wednesday. That's next Wednesday, late Wednesday probably. And we'll be talking week zero because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be discussed about week zero. Again, a lot of FCS games that matter in week zero. A, a lot of games, you know, in week zero are going to matter in regards to how some of these other teams, some of these top 25 teams, how their season's going to shake out. So with that being said, Big Boy Sports, signing out, and I'll see you all very, very soon uh, with the NBA schedule, whenever that comes out. So I don't know when it'll come out this week, but it'll come out this week. Take care, and I'll see you soon.